25 years. I think Hacker 101 and 102 are the only things that are older than this in the FF track. But anyway, I uh, had a lot of fun doing this. We've had police officers on this uh, with us. We've had defense attorneys. We've had prosecuting attorneys. We've had detectives. Had a wide variety of folks on it. And it's always great to, and we've actually had the actors you saw in this, the police in this, are were actually police before they became actors. And we've had one of them on this panel before as well, the one who arrests the old lady. Uh, so it's always great to have better perspectives on this. <laughs> and so it's always great to have uh, new eyes on this topic. So to my left. Hey, uh, good evening. My name is Corey Rosenberger. I'm an assistant district attorney with the Conasauga Judicial Circuit. That is Whitfield and Murray County. Um, it's uh, the second to last county you go through on I-75 before you get to Tennessee. Um, and Murray County is the one next to it. It's a pretty small area. Um, I've been practicing law for about 10 years now, exclusively criminal. Um, the first four years of that, I was a public defender, um, and the coming up on six years, I've been a prosecutor. Yep. So uh, please do line up if you have questions. I will uh, bring up some of the topics that we've had here uh, before to deal with. Uh, one of the questions people get asked about in Georgia, especially, is um, uh, DUI questions and being pulled over. If you have why you have to show your license. Uh, in Georgia, basically, you have, by getting a driver's license, you have consented, essentially, at that moment to show a police officer your license uh, when you're pulled over. Now, the other question is when you're on foot, uh, because in Georgia, it is not common, but it's also not unknown for people to be arrested uh, for not identifying themselves. And it's actually crazy, often a trespass uh charge a basic criminal trespass charge if you're in the streets or in your own home if you don't identify yourself the idea being that if they don't know who you are obviously you have no reason for no good reason for being there uh i've never gotten a great answer on this one how do you have to identify yourself because you're not expected to have your driver's license on you if you're not driving but some sort of positive identification i am so and so uh, is generally enough to avoid that. And, and courts have upheld these prosecutions in Georgia regarding identification. So um, this case, uh, as far as current case law goes, um, it's my understanding and my belief uh, that it... Quick, say that bit okay. about uh, um, about no legal uh, uh, representation here. Dur <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, as far as Georgia and federal law goes, um, there, there's a case, it was decided in the 70s called Terry v. Ohio. Um, and in Terry v. Ohio, the police were doing um, pretty much random stop and frisks on people. Um, that was declared without re what he said on the TV, reasonable suspicion um, to be unconstitutional. Um, there is a great United States Supreme Court case that says if police do not have articulable suspicion, a reasonable suspicion that you are committing a crime, you can walk, run, or cartwheel away from them. <laughs> um, and so if they ask for identification, the, the, the flip side of that is you don't know what they know. Um, and if there was a bolo or something um, for a person in a blue shirt and khaki pants. Uh, the bolo is the police saying, hey, go find yeah, this person. Uh, uh, in be the blue on shirt. the lookout, sorry. Um, then, you know, they might have reasonable suspicion to stop you. Um, and so you always want to ask them again, are, am I being detained? Um, that should, before you ask, before you voluntarily pull out your license, um, just ask them that. Um, if they say yes, then you need to show them your license. If they say no, then you can cartwheel away. Don't run. <laughs> just do the cartwheel. Uh, we often, uh, well, we saw the one on the, on airports. And uh, you actually are consenting to search when you walk up to the uh, metal detectors and the like. In order to get on the plane, you're agreeing to being searched. You are essentially giving up that level of consent right at that moment. Other, as long as you have the ability to just turn away, turn around and walk away. This is the same for like if you go to uh, the Georgia World Congress Center or to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. If they have security set up there and they're searching bag. As long as you have the ability to walk up and turn around and not be searched, uh, you're fine. Um, they can't 
if you go in, then they have the right to go in and search your your stuff. Uh, so, um, I forget where I was going, but we often get the questions about the airports, as you saw on this one. I haven't gotten a good uh, full uh, analysis of what happened in the video you saw first with him being checked, because you are you can be checked coming into it. You've given up the right to send, but once you're in. You're expected to have possession of your items and not have to worry about handing them over. When I've talked to various people, I don't, I don't know if there's really good case law about what happens when you're in there because I didn't get a good definitive answer uh, to the gentleman's situation where the police wanted to search his bag uh, at that point. It would seem that he did everything right and uh, the police uh, searched it without having cause, but we'll see because once you're in, it, it's that point when you get in there when you go to the metal detectors where you're saying, yes, you may look at my stuff so I can get on my plane. So I get to the other side of this. What happens with you're in? So I, I believe um, that that would be overturned. So if, if they had found contraband in his bag um, and he was arrested, I believe, I think that that arrest would not stand in court. Does everybody know, understand the, the, dic the difference between an arrest and a conviction? Does an, Everybody, raise your hand if you don't. We're glad to explain. Okay. I mean, this is the one but to get yeah, your question answered. And, and you'll you'll hear a lot between arrest and conviction. But if there is nothing you can do to stop a a police officer who is violating your rights from arresting you, um, they they alluded to that in the video. Um, but as far as I think that I don't think that they would be able to, to obtain a, a conviction in that case, um, mainly because they're two different federal agencies, the TSA. And the um, what was that? The DEA. Oh yeah. Um, the DEA is not their job is not to protect airports. <laughs> um, that's the TSA's job, and the TSA is equipped for that. They are, you know, um, yeah, they're equipped. They are, you know, that's where you expect to be searched, and they can legally search you. Um, at the TSA can. Um, the other problem that 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 causes, if, um, and this is the main reason I think that a judge would throw this out is that the government could just seize everybody's stuff. Um, that it's, it cre it would create a loophole more or less where, um, if they, if they think you've got something good in your bag, they're going to say, well, we're going to search this bag. You can either catch your flight or you can, you know, s stay and guard your stuff. Um, and so that's why I think, uh, that that would ultimately be overturned. Again, this is the first I've, seen something like this um and so there's probably not a good not a lot of case law on right. it so far so why Corey talks about the supreme court stuff until it's gone up to that level we don't know what the final definitive answer is so we can just uh, conject make conjecture based on how case law has worked so far all right first question and you do not need to identify yourself here to ask your question <laughs> hello Hello. <laughs> okay. Hello. Good. Yeah. All right. So I have one question. Right. Uh, as as far as a black male, when when pol police spot us in the street, not pull us over, but when they when we walking or we're in front of something, they will handcuff us and put us in a car, and they will say for their safety. Is that me being detained and arrested? Well, not not arrested, but at least being detained. Yes. Unlawfully. Um, it depends on what evidence they have. Um, no, you're just standing there. Yeah. They, you know, um, and searching. So seizing. if you if they had no evidence that or no, no evidence that you had committed a crime, mm -hmm. no tips, no anything like that, um, it's called reasonable articulable suspicion. Right. Um, and that's the standard that it takes to detain somebody. So there are there are three. It's called it's a three tier system. At tier one, you can walk, run, or cartwheel away from the police. Tier two, uh, they have to have reasonable suspicion, and that uh, the legal standard is they have to have articulable facts that you have committed a crime, are in the process of committing a crime, or have are about to commit a crime. Um, there's case law that that you know, fleshes out what reasonable suspicion is. But if they do not have reasonable suspicion, they cannot detain you. So that would be an illegal 
um, arrest. The tier three, you have to have probable cause that a crime was committed. I um, probable cause is a slightly higher burden or a slightly higher level of evidence than reasonable suspicion. Um, and a you a person is under arrest when they feel it, it, it's kind of silly. You'll hear lawyers say a reasonable person a lot of times. But when a reasonable person feels that they um, are not leaving outside of the back of a patrol car, uh, that they are under arrest. So if they put you in handcuffs mm -hmm. in the back of a patrol car, I would, as a defense for their attorney, safety. Yes. Oh, for for their sake. That's can't what they stop tell you. us. <laughs> yeah. They cannot stop you. Um, now, if they're investigating a scene or something then they could probably tell you to back away or something like that. Um, it obviously is not a good look if they're just asking the black people to back away. Um, but yeah. uh, as far as um, they are allowed, if they, they, if they feel that they are in danger. So, um, mm. so you have like a box. It looks like you have a box right here or something. A sling. Yeah. So. Any pack that the police could could see that and that alone would give them enough to say oh you might have a gun on you but they have to have like some they have to see it they can't they're not allowed to pat you down mm -hmm. they are not allowed but if they see like an open weapon or something that could be a weapon courts have routinely upheld that that they're allowed to say hey man what do you have right there mm -hmm. now if you show if you dispel that concern to them then you then they would no longer be um you'd no longer be you know a threat to them mm. but they have to have again articulable facts to the to to back up to say that i was i was afraid or he presented a safety concern and yeah. one of the issues we'll always have with this is there there are a broad level of reasons to detain you um and again this is to keep you from being convicted not the arrested part the, the story a friend of mine doesn't mind me using we i was the original developer being called vampire the math grade and one of our team members travis williams a big african-american gentleman from atlanta got rear-ended on poncy so he'd been rear-ended but because he didn't have his license that was the excuse to arrest him and take mm -hmm. him down to uh, uh fulton uh pretrial detention we spent the rest of the weekend bailing him out before it got too bad for him but it was very interesting the levels of justification for taking him down there yeah uh and it was amazing but of course from that point on nothing ever happened to him case disappeared but he had um that that thing you you get arrested you're ruining your weekend your week your month and that absolutely happened to him but because he had been smart and did not consent to any search not that there was anything in his car anyway um it all just disappeared from that point on so I hate to say that that stuff does happen and yeah. there's a wide range of justifications for it. Uh, and then they go back to the information about how do you go ahead and document this for the complaints? And you do want to do yeah. that, but there is a broad, I, there is a broad range of justifications yeah. for that sort of harassment. And another thing, if I don't have ID on me, they could, they use this excuse to say, oh, well, we're going to take you ID. to the, yes to run your ID and then we stay three days for FBI prints to come back. That's what they're telling us. Well, is that arrested? You, <laughs> is that, if you're be, in jail, you're arrested. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you're in jail, well, that is, that is as tier three as it gets. Um, so is that against the law to carry ID? That would, so it is not against the law. I mean, to, to not, not carry, carry an ID. ID. Right. Now walking, driving. Yeah. No walking. Yeah. Again, if the police have reasonable suspicion or uh, yeah, reasonable suspicion that you have committed a cr or that a crime has been committed or you have committed a crime, then they are allowed to ask for your ID. If you don't have an ID, then you are required again, because at that point you are being detained. And when you're being detained, they do have the authority to ask for your name. Um, and if you don't have your driver's license, they can ask for your name and date of birth. And okay. one of the important things, never lie to the police just shut up do not lie to the police. oh and you have to affirmatively say i am shutting up before you shut up you and can't just shut up there's a there's a great case on that um and it's it you everybody in this room will, will groan when they hear it so in Lu the louisiana supreme court uh, a defendant was being interrogated 
and he said, I want a lawyer dog. And the Supreme Court of Louisiana interpret, interpreted that to say there is no such thing as a canine lawyer. And so he was not affirmatively uh, expressing his right to an attorney. Um, so I would actually take it one step further than what uh, the, the video said and just say, I invoke my Fifth Amendment rights. Um, that way there is no just saying I want a lawyer. Um, but you also have to say I, I will. Be, I'm going to be quiet. And then you have to be quiet. Yeah. So uh, that that's another uh, thing. Uh, so I, as, as I introduce myself, I am the 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 person that gets a case after the police make an arrest. So you are the man. I, I work for the man. Yes. He is not the government, yeah. though. <laughs> that's the guy on TV. Sure. Or how? We don't know. And you said he has to prove that he doesn't. Can he say, I don't have a gun? Or does he have to show them the contents of this thing? Because if he has a thingy back, I, I can say, I don't have a gun, I don't have a weapon. So now, at, you're a cop coming at me because I got a pouch. Do I have to show you what's in my pouch? I would say you do not. I um, just have to say, I don't have a weapon. So you, you would need to show the pouch to them. So okay. he so, so he had not a holster and it's not a concealed right. weapon. So he, it's he had a bul he had uh, it's kind of nice that you're wearing that. He has a bulge on him. When it when it's over his shirt. On the side, yeah, on, on the, side. the side. When when it when it is over the shirt, that could it appears that it has the possibility of being a firearm tucked into his pants. The police would then be able to say, "Hey, what what you got there? Do you mind they um if he doesn't, you and uh, as a black man, I, I I would I would refrain from reaching for it. Um, but uh, <laughs> say uh, they they are allowed to to look into that. Now I don't think that they would be allowed to look inside of that pouch. They could pat it. They can pat you down, and they can look at what the pouch is. But once they see that it is not a firearm, that um, or anything that would cause that would immediately cause them harm, then I think that all concerns would be dispelled. But if they say they feel something feels like a weapon, expect them to look in it, whether there's something that feels like a weapon or not. So two quick more things. Driving, you have given you've implied consent. You've given the implication of consent to having your license and showing to police when you're pulled over. Walking, no, but Georgia case law, we haven't gone to the Georgia Supreme Court with how much do you have to identify yourself. And what I keep getting told is if you are asked to identify yourself in order to avoid this whole criminal trespass thing that they'll pull on you, you do need to affirmatively identify yourself. I am this person. That, that's, name, it, name and date of birth. It hasn't gotten to the Supreme Court. We don't really know. So, but again, you are not required to have a, li a driver's license in the state or even a state ID. So you're, you, they can't require that of you. So they are allowed to check to see if you have warrants. And so they have they have to be able to determine who you are. And it, so, you know, running your name and date of birth, that'll check to see if you have warrants. And again, just set up these. He calls them the legal condoms. Just set up these layers of defense because it's to avoid that conviction, which will really F things up. Sorry, we can't give you a better answer on that. Um, I've, I've been told uh, conflicting advice about uh, dashboard cams and body body cams that you should. Uh, request that they be turned on and other times I've been told that that is a red flag for the officers and they're there's it's they see that as an act of hostility oh, really? the other thing is that um, a female officer told me that you should never pull over unless there's people by this pe unless you're in a populated area but how do you do that safely without the police seeing that again as a, a way of uh, eva evasion so there is no way like if you are if you would just, I'm trying to think of Whitfield like County. On a high, like right, on a highway. On the interstate. There's no way for you to, without an officer thinking that you're trying, you're fleeing, mm -hmm. to um, drive three miles and get off. It is a great idea to pull off in a well-lit, mm -hmm. yeah. well-lit populated mm -hmm. area. That will put the good police officers and you at mm -hmm. ease that neither one of you are going to try to hurt each other. We have been told by... We've been yeah. told by police officers on this panel, they would prefer you go to a well-lit populated okay. area, turn the flashers on, okay. go slow, okay. keep your hands on mm -hmm. uh, whatever, 10 and whatever. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and go there. But uh, if a cop's telling you to get the heck off the road, mm-hmm. at that point you need to be getting off the road, unfortunately. So, and the first question was on asking for body cam and the dash cam to be turned so, on. Uh, this is one of the things that the tech folks keep telling me that the cops want the cams on because they know there's a phone watching them somewhere. They need their own cam stuff. If they don't have it on, there's a problem with the police officer. If they've got a cam and it's not on, there's a problem already in the situation. So uh, the police should have it on for their own protection. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Mm-hmm. All Most police officers love body cams. They make they they make guilty criminals easily identifiable mm-hmm. i love body cams whitfield county actually has a system um so I've, every sheriff's office deputy has an officer as soon as they initiate their blue lights on their vehicle or that their their gun is drawn their um their body cam automatically turns on like it's all linked um and we it's usually flashing um and I couldn't tell, there are so many different systems and so many different brands that I, I couldn't tell you affirmatively for sure if it's on or not. But um, I would always advise it, even when I get pulled over sometimes, I will, I don't let the officer know what I'm doing because that obviously would escalate things, but just start an audio recording. Um, and have that audio on your home page. We're at time apparently, mm-hmm. but so come on up. We'll keep uh, taking questions. We'll go out in the hall. No, just, just come on up. We're uh, we're at time apparently. Um, Do we need to like vacate? Yeah, let's take- Last okay. question. And if you have questions, you can come on up and keep talking to us. We'll go out into the hall as well. This is just a question about like political arrests when protests are happening and there's a bunch of people getting mass arrested. Is there anything you could do to try to avoid a conviction, even if you Oh, a conviction? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're seeing those getting thrown out left and right. Left and right. I mean, the 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 rest aren't going beyond you spending the week in jail there are few obviously cop city they're going after extra hard and so especially um when when we're talking about the different burdens of proof so there's reasonable suspicion probable cause then there's preponderance of the evidence preponderance of the evidence is just over 50 percent so more likely than not but that isn't what it takes for a criminal conviction criminal conviction is even higher than that it's something called beyond a reasonable doubt Um, and it is the highest burden of any court in the united states Um, a lot of time with the protests um, they have to prove i used to tell my clients all the time they can't charge me with that it's like the police can i mean they can charge you with anything they want they have to be able to prove it later Um, and so with the with that it depends um you can just say i want a trial and they will have to prove that you were doing something beyond just protesting. Um, now, if they, if they, and protests are generally a chaotic event, um, and if they happen to have a video, video footage that looks like you throwing a rock through a window, then you probably are cooked. But otherwise, you know, there's a good chance that a jury would find you not guilty. Yeah, most of the arrests around the Gaza protest, college campuses, have been thrown out. I mean, people are getting kicked out of school still, but that's not arrest and conviction. Would you, some police officers are playing closed instigators. Would you say there's anything you could do to try to figure out if you can tell? I've heard stab vests are usually the way to figure it out. Probably. And if I was a police officer um, at a, you know, plain closed police officer at a protest, I'd probably wear a stab vest. Um, there's not like a protocol for that that I know of. Um, Be careful what you say and to whom, period. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, all right. Four last things. You ready? You knew this was coming. (laughs) Number one, am I being detained or am I free to go? Am I being detained or am I free to go? Number two, I do not consent to any searches. I do not consent to any searches. Number three, he wants to say the, but you're not going to remember which amendment it is. That's the problem. You're not going to remember fifth, 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 fourth. Two of them, fourth and fifth. Invoke, fifth is invoke your right to remain silent. But uh, these are high stress situations. That's why we're rehearsing. Please rehearse this constantly. You haven't. So we're going to go with the simple one. I'm uh, I'm going to remain silent. I want to talk to my lawyer. I'm going to remain silent. I want to talk to my lawyer. And finally, uh, I'm. uh, How do they phrase it? Uh, If you don't have a warrant, I can't let you in. 
If you don't have a warrant, I can't let you in. All right. Have a great, safe Dragon Con, everyone. Tell your idiot friends that they need to see this next year. If, if anybody.